All right, welcome back to the shop. Today's project is going to be a fuel tank, long-range fuel tank. It's uh, I think I've got it. Uh, I designed it on the computer in Autodesk Inventor in the sheet metal tools. Um, so it's going to be. It's like third total volume is 31.6 gallons, I think, something like that. Uh, probably 30 usable gallons in it. So. Um, so I'm doing it out of 16 gauge mild steel, uh, so uh, yeah, that should be fun to build. Um, all the other tanks, I think Genrite makes one, and I think there's another company that makes a long range tank, but they're super expensive, 800 to 1,000 bucks or something. So I figured I'd give it a shot and see if I could build my own. So uh, that's what's going on with that. And then <clears throat> I think I'm so I'm starting to loom some stuff and get some. Get some of the loom put together uh, using, I think I showed this in an earlier episode, but I'm using this uh, non-adhesive vinyl tape and then uh, this fabric uh, style, OEM style tape to, to tape stuff up. So that's starting to shape up a little bit. I've made it almost to the firewall. Uh, and then interior wise, um, I have a steering column again. Well, kind of. It's still loose, but... Heater cores back in. I figured out all the wiring. I had a, I was having a ground issue, where <laughs> at least I figured out it was a ground issue. Um, key on, everything was working fine. But when I would pull the headlights on, the rear wiper would turn on, which was kind of strange. So I chased that back and forth and all over the place and read a ton of schematics in the book and finally figured out that it had to be a ground, bad ground somewhere. And on the far side of the dash core on that side over there there's a bunch of ground wires that bolt to the back side of the plastic dash to an actual metal bracket that bolts to the body which that's where it gets its ground from so as soon as I put that bolt in and tightened it up then everything worked so that was good I was kind of pulling my hair out well the rest of my hair out there for a while trying to figure out what was going on with that so um, anyway um, reassembly of the interior is uh, coming along. I'll show you this here too. So uh, I've got my cruise control buttons figured out. I've got, uh, let me set this down so I can see what's going on here. So I've got on off, which the GM computer needs a, a constant 12 volt for to arm the system. And then this is a momentary, so the bottom will be set coast, and the top will be uh, resume accelerate. Um, using the buttons in the Jeep dash, uh, or in the Jeep steering wheel, is impossible. And I'm going to show you why. Because uh, I thought, oh shit, there's like five buttons on there, why don't I just use those? Well, so these buttons, uh, there's two on this side, and three on this side and there are two wires going through the clock spring. So I started read, doing some reading and looking up and stuff and, the, and I actually took this switch all the way apart and there are different value resistors inside here and so the computer sensed the resistance of you know whatever button you were pushing and then took appropriate action for your cruise control. So can't use the steering wheel, which kind of sucks, but whatever, the dash ones I think will be okay. Uh, what else is going on? I think that's uh, about it. Um, just uh, just working on cleaning wiring up. Oh, and I'll maybe I can show you this too. Okay, so four-wheel drive uh, shifter, transfer case shifter. So you can see I've got this little switch here, a little micro switch. You can see it inside there. Hopefully you can hear that clicking. So I want to have a four-wheel drive light on the dash that tells me when I'm in four-wheel drive. Uh, so that's what that switch is for and then I'm also going to mount another one back here further back so that when I go into low range uh, then because the GM computer because because my VSS is on the back end of the transfer case the computer needs to know when you're in for low so that I can adjust shift points and stuff so I'm going to put another switch on here to uh, tell the GM computer when I'm in for low. So, and also, uh, I found out that two low kit that I have in my transfer case 
Um, so I was I was planning on just using this. Then I realized, well, this is just to just to tell you when you're in four wheel drive. That's useless to the GM computer for low range. So I also found out that the shift comb on that two low kit, when you pull it all the way down into two low, uh, this switch isn't grounded anymore, which I think is a design flaw by on DC four wheel drive's part. So anyway, that switch is now useless. So I'm not even going to use it. I'm just going to leave it plug in the hole and not hook anything up to it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so that's how I'm going to solve my low range signal is by using some little micro switches on the shifter itself. Uh, I also have this, which is a cable transfer case shift cable out of a, like a 04, 05 Liberty. Um, I was going to do some uh, linkage and stuff that was just, you can see I started my bracket here. I was going to do the linkage all connected to the side of the transmission slash transfer case and I got rid of the, um, there's a bracket on these XJs that uh, that is uh, mounted to the underside of the transmission tunnel and so uh, I got rid of that and I was just going to run it all on the side here and then I kind of wanted to do a cable shifter because I think Novak and Somebody else sells a cable shifter, but you know, again, all their stuff's gold plated and they want 250 or 300 bucks for them. So, uh, I'm gonna see if I can cobble together something with the Liberty shifter. Um, looks like it's in you know, it reaches okay up to where the, where the shifter comes through the floor and it's you know, should be pretty close to the right length. Um, if that doesn't work, there's another option. Grand Cherokees, the WJs, actually have a cable shifter for the transfer case too, but those cables are like four feet long. They're extremely long, and so it would be total overkill trying to do that. But uh, if this one doesn't work out, I may have to switch to a WJ uh, shift cable. So anyway, there's going to be some other random clips in this episode after this showing you kind of bending some some of my sheets for the fuel tank and uh, I'll show you this part of the fuel tank while I'm here. So I've got this for my fuel pickup which in retrospect I should have mounted it a little further this way. It's a little close to this ring. Um, fuel pump, uh, stock fuel pump obviously goes in there and then I'm using the stock fuel pump ring. I'm just, uh, I just got to trim it in a few places and then I'm going to do quarter 20 bolts through these slots here and uh, kind of a thick rubber gasket underneath it to hold it in. And I'll probably end up putting some kind of a, some kind of RTV around these uh, rivet nuts just to, so that that doesn't leak. So anyway, you'll see some more random clips of me working on some stuff and, and probably shots of something I did previously and whatever. So. Anyway, thanks for subscribing. I'm almost at 90 subscribers now, I think. So thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. And uh, see you in the next one.
All right, so you can see my little jig here. I just welded a piece of big angle iron, tacked it to the table, and then another piece on top, clamped it, and a dead blow, and uh, 16 gauge isn't too bad to do like that. Uh, it's, you know, I'm, you saw me hammer pretty hard on the, on the 90 degrees, but the smaller bends, you actually get a fairly decent bend. So that's the bottom, and that's the back and the sides, and that's the top and the front. So that's all the main pieces of it, and I showed you the tray for the fuel pump and the sender already. So here's my dog. Hi, Daisy. Sit. Yeah, so I'm using, I can't remember if I've showed you this or not, but this is a Classic Industries uh, vertical like bubble or float type fuel sender, just two, two wire hookup. Figured that was easier than trying to use the stock one and bend the wire and all that kind of crap. So, and you can order these in whatever like resistance you need for uh, whatever gauge you're running. I think this one is, uh, yeah, 229.15 is what, um, the fuel gauge that I have takes. So anyway, that's that. A little shot inside the tank. Hopefully that's not too dark to see how the uh, pump and the, the fuel filler are going to look. Fuel filler, the fuel level sensor and the pump. That's what I meant to say.